Three. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable, we got the usual suspects. We've got Dude Buddy, the nightcap OG, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are you? Great, Mark. And you? I'm great. Pulse is still normal. Respiration's fine. And as I like to haze Scott Todd with my Apple Watch, unlike him, I know my heart rate all the time. We got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm doing good. Happy to be here. Good to see you. We've got the most feared woman in the country, the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you today, Mark? I'm great. I'm great. Good to see you. Uh, the Zen master, Mike Zano, is on the call. He, we're just staring at a chair of him right now. He had to go park the car, something like that. Anyways, we got the big papa, Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are you? I'm happy to be here. So happy to see your smiling face. And last but not least, you know him. You love him. Scott Todd. ScottTodd.net. LandMoto.com. HostingDomination.com. Forward slash The Land Geek. And InvestorNinjas.com. And he is your flight school Sherpa. And if you want to start doing the business as opposed to academically hearing videos and reading and doing all these things, but do the business in real time, today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School. Just go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training, get on a call with the Zen master, the nightcap OG, and learn more. Scott Todd, how are you? I'm good, Mark. How are you? I'm, I'm great. And again, just loving my Apple Watch. All right, we have a, a great topic. It is getting the list. So on the uh, Land Geek official motivation and wealth creation page, we had an interesting question about where do people go to get their lists? And if I go ahead and, and read, it says, I need some suggestions to get lists. I'm contemplating Agent Pro 247, but it's super expensive and the quote unquote Distressed leads don't seem reliable. I'm using the free trial. Are there any other tools out there? The counties that I want to attack are horrible when it comes to providing reliable and complete data. And as soon as I just read the word data, I immediately think, this is a great question for the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, what are your thoughts? Let's start with you. All right, so I'll start with some comments about Agent Pro. Um, First of all, it is a completely reasonable source to get your list. Um, the data, there's a chance it could be very old. So there's a way, I don't remember off the top of my head, but if you Google for it or look around the site, there's a way to tell how old the data is for the particular county you're looking at. So assuming you know the data is less than a year old, then it's probably a re reasonable source to pull your list. Um, I don't remember it being super expensive. I want to say about five cents a lead, um, or, a, a row of data, if you will. Um, I guess that adds up. Um, there are other ways to get the list as well, but, uh, you know, if you're looking for a way to target a sp specific area within a County, um, they have a map tool. You can kind of outline the, the area you want to work in and pull that list. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't say it's a, it's a, not a terrible option in any way. Which option would you opt for right now? Um, myself, when I pull a list, I don't use agent pro anymore at this point in time. Um, we build our list manually, um, through various sources, but, uh, but yeah, I think it's, it's a good place to start. All right, great. The Zen Master, Mike Zano. Mike, how are you? I'm doing very well, Mark. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. So as far as getting the list, yeah. do you use a tool like Agent Pro 247 or people were mentioning in the comments Data Tree? Any of those tools? I've never used Data Tree. I have used Agent Pro 247 with great success. I think there's a lot of ways, and I think I think a lot of times what we hear from people, Mark, is like, oh, it's going to cost this much. Or it's, well, there's always a cost, whether you outsource it or whether you buy it. Um, and the people that do the business all the time, people on this round table here, realize it's 
not a big deal. One deal is going to crush the cost of any list acquisition, right? So um, I have used Agent Pro 247 and I've had great success with it. I've also done what uh, Eric's talking about, had a team uh, build lists for me. Um, I think that, uh, you know, this is clearly one of the biggest obstacles that people encounter when they first start because it's on that left side, right? It's the beginning of the process. And, um, you know, I could uh, just say that uh, the guy to my right here, I don't know where he's on screen, but Scott, if you go through flight school, you'll learn so many ways that uh, it'll never be a barrier again. But this, it is, it is initially this concern, right? But I don't, it doesn't matter what it costs, right? I'm not saying go pay it like thousands of dollars for it, but one deal trumps the cost of any data that we're going to pay for. Yeah, I feel like you are channeling uh, your inner Borat there. and just, <laughs> Borat? Yeah, because it's like, get the list, great success. <laughs> Don't worry about the glasses. glasses. Great success. Can and, I do this? Give me the glasses and the thick uh, Kazakhstani type of mustache. So let's go to the terrorist hunter. Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, what do you do? Gosh. I think every county I'm in right now, I, I get data a different way, right? In some of the more populated, populated counties, I can just download it off the site. A lot of times I've called the counties. I've had counties e uh, mail me CDs. I've had counties send me uh, electronic files out on like a Google Drive or a Dropbox. Um, the G even the most antiquated of counties right now have a lot of them have GIS systems. Um, and even if the GIS systems aren't complete and really, really good, find subdivisions that are already surveyed that are okay, right? So um, the GIS systems where you can highlight areas and download the data can use that. You can do it by calling the county themselves. If it's not on the website, you can use one of the services online. Um, and honestly, it may cost you, you know, let's say you spend 200 bucks one time. Once you've focused on the area that you're going to be in that county, and then you've updated it with your skip tracing on addresses that you've corrected, you kind of have your own list. You don't want to go buy a new list every quarter or twice a year. You have your refined list. And so it's really kind of a, uh, a sunk cost in accounting terms that doesn't really affect you all that often anymore. All right. All right. I love it. Dude, buddy, Scott Bossman. How about you? Well, to, to agree with Mimi, I, I get lists in different ways, depending on the, on the particular county. When you work the county for so long, you know, I know, I know a particular county I work, I can get the data really easily on the assessor website. Um, so there are all different ways. I, I have people assist with building me a list, depending on the area I'm in. Um, what, what I would recommend for people is just don't give up. Uh, if, if you're having a hard time finding a list in that county, there are definitely ways to do it. So take this podcast to heart and, you know, try some of these services. I haven't used AdaTree. I've used Agent Pro 247. Uh, I've, I've done all these other things that we've, that we've mentioned. And the, the data is out there. It's just the, the important thing is to get 20 names and, and make that your target day-to-day uh, -day to, to get up and running. Yeah, I mean, I think the three big tools are agentpro247.com, datatree, and listsource.com that you can use. What's interesting is that what I'm seeing is when you're more advanced, and we do teach this to our one-on-one our -on -one coaching clients, that you learn ways to actually build your own list, and you're not dependent on any of these paid programs. Um, that being said, I'd love for the big papa to go into the time machine of a newbie. And did you, you know, how would you get the list tape when you're first starting? You know, I think when I first started, I was getting a list uh, simply by kind of calling around and making friends with the county. Some people would say, Oh, it's not possible to do it, but it, it definitely is. And uh, you know, if you can get any data, you're off to the races. You don't need to have everything. You don't need to have delinquent information to make offers. You can just do it. And I think the people who kind of overcome that fear of offering too much or not offering enough or, you know, looking kind of foolish on your first offers, if you can overcome that 
and you realize you're just sending letters and if people get upset about it, no biggie, it's, it's not a big deal. I think you're, you're going to be better off because your phone's going to start ringing and you're going to have the opportunity to talk to people and find out why your price is too high or if it's too low and how to adjust. So I think uh, I originally started by picking up a delinquent tax roll list or even starting with the, uh, the tax roll list and just kind of built my own list. And since then, that, that process has evolved and it's become a little, well, a lot easier and I've trained a lot of people to do it for me. So now I don't really even think about it, but um, you got to start somewhere and you might as well start with a, a phone call in my opinion, see if it's possible. But yeah, one absolutely. other thing, Mark, yeah. if you see other investors there and the county tells you, oh, they don't give you a list, don't just give up that easy. Like, like Mimi said, there, there's always a way to get the list. And if the people you know, like trust and respect in the business are there, it's not a bad idea for you to move up in there as well. Yeah, that's a that's a really good point for sure. Um, Scott Todd, you know, Mark, there's a, there's I mean, there's a lot of great advice that's been shared already, and I think that the interesting thing is that oftentimes you you have to find what works in each county, right? Like you've got to find like there's no there's no set way to do it in every single county. I mean, some of the best advice I heard on today's call is like the expense of it, right? Yeah, there's an expense. You can you could pay the county for the list, and that's an expense. You could go to to uh, you know uh, Agent Pro two four seven, and there's an expense there. But you got to stop focusing on the expense of it and recognize that it is it is an initial investment that you're making. Once you get that list, well then from there, the list doesn't change, but maybe once a year, okay? And it doesn't change that largely either. So, you know, you can keep working the same list over and over and over again. You know, there's ways of, of customizing that list. You can get the, the tax roll from the county, right? Call up the county and get the tax roll. That's free. And that is and oftentimes, and that is every single property owner in the county, houses, apartments, everything then filter down to, down to the land. There's different ways to get creative, the GIS maps. There's different ways that you can get what you want. But a lot of times people throw up their hands and they're like, oh, it's too expensive. Or, you know, it just seems too complicated. Yeah, well, that's the initial startup pain. But don't, you know, don't overthink it, right? There's easy ways that you can ninja hack it and just work the county. And look, there's people, honestly, there are people that are, that are much better at getting stuff done than you are. I mean, the other day I got uh, hit up by someone on Facebook. He said he works for other land investors and he gets their list. So they're out there. You can find them different places. Uh, ask in the groups, right? Who's getting your list for you? People will tell you and they'll share their VAs. I won't share my VAs because they get my secret, you know, ninja recipes, but maybe, the, maybe you'll share yours. Well, unlike you, I'm generous with my VAs and, you know, and information knowledge because I really want to see people succeed and not struggle, but which is actually kind of interesting, Scott Todd, because, you know, I'm totally- I don't want to see anybody struggle. I, I try no, to make I'm, it easy. I'm totally, I'm totally joking because, you know, flight school is all about <laughs> taking out all the pain uh, of this business and you, you do that, but- um, you know, harass me, Mark. It's all right. It's all right. Yeah. You and your Apple Watch. Yeah, I mean, I have, to haze, Watch. I have to haze you. And you know what? Thank you. It is snooty. It is snooty. <laughs> you know, because I I'm insecure that way. I need something to signal to the outside world in some way that, that you're a fanboy. No, not that I'm a fanboy. That I can uh, just tell time, listen to music, listen to audiobooks. And do all these other things that you Rolex wearers can't do. I don't wear a Rolex. I don't wear a Rolex, uh, man. Come on, man. I, I, got, a, I got a citizen. You got, you got the bubble. Citizen. Yeah. That's, citizen. That's because I, I shamed you about the no, Rolex. No, no. I you, do you, have okay. a Rolex. It, it was a gift ah, from my father. Ah, ah, I, that away. I, I can't turn that away. Rolex. It's from my father with love. No, no. I know. It's, it's good. Okay, let's move on. Okay, you were yeah. saying you do share your VAs and you do share your VAs. No, but I, but I think, no, I mean, you know, and all joking aside now, um, to be serious, I, I do think what you said is really 
the, the ultimate strategy, because if you're going to be an entrepreneur, you're the conductor, you are the one setting the strategy. This is how we get a list. How much money are you making getting a list? Zero. You make nothing getting the list. So if you're going to go hire someone to get you the list, like a VA, great. If you're going to pay for a list, like Mike Zano is saying, great. If you're going to be the technician and you're going to build your own list, great. What's not great is throwing up your hands and saying, oh, well, I, I can't get a list because you can reframe that. And if you're having difficulty in that county, be actually going to have a, an attitude of, of gratitude because if that county is that difficult to get a list, then great. You know, nine out of 10 people aren't going to be able to, to crack that county, get that list. You're going to have so much less competition because you were resourceful enough to do it. So I think that, I think it was a good uh, topic to bring up and now we should just segue into our tip of the week, a website, a resource, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go improve their businesses, improve their lives. We can always count on the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, what do you got? So I am hearing, um, some troubleshooting issues in Facebook. So a lot of folks, when you get in trouble on Facebook, your visibility seems to diminish. But there's a particular situation I wanted to talk about today where you post an ad and you get one view. Day goes by, one view. What it is is that um, when you're posting an ad in the buy sell groups or in marketplace, there's a glitch in the location cell. So with that particular ad, if you get one view, delete the ad. When you're posting new ads in the location, don't put a zip code and put a big enough city that when you type out the major city that there's a thumbnail picture of the city. If there's no thumbnail picture of the city, then don't use that location. Get to a bigger city, a bigger location that offers you the thumbnail when you start to type out the city, okay? Um, that's what's causing that glitch there is what's causing there to only get one view and then the, the, the ad to get no other response. Wow. That's a, that's a great tip for sure. Um, before we end the podcast, I do want to give a shout out to Zach Kep. Um, he sent us a really nice text uh, actually to me and Tate. Tate, do you still have that? Yeah. Let me pull it up real quick. You want to read that? And then because uh -huh. it does bring up an, an interesting um, topic from last week about cash versus terms. So the text reads, um, I profited $45,320 today. This is a rare and unforgettable moment. Uh, I didn't get excited, but I was simply breathless with gratitude. I can't thank you guys enough. You have impacted my life from the inside out. I wake up excited, eager, and humble every single day. Thank you. 45k mark yeah yeah and um and you wrote him back something really nice and he's like you know what did you write uh let me see Jeez. in that text string but so i write back and i said to him um wait where'd it go i just touched my oh i'm on the wrong one Well, it's, it's not here or there, but uh, you know, it, it was just really nice what he wrote back to you. Yeah. I said, I said, you know, wow, I, I congratulated him. And he said, I couldn't do it without you, bud. The coaching decision was the best investment I've ever made. And I said, it's just the beginning. And then you went on to, to sing his praises as well. But it's kind of cool to see that, you know, he and I have been working together for what, three, maybe four months now. And you know, I've received two or three text messages like this from him in that time. So pretty powerful to see what happens when you follow the recipe, right? He has done exactly what we've asked him and, you know, he's living the dream, so to speak. Right. And making 45,000 cash in that week, like I have no problem with it. I just think that if that's all he was doing is cash sales, that he's not going to build wealth. Oh, and, and that's I, not his focus. It's just 
turns out that he had a, you know, somebody that wanted to pay cash. Yeah. You know, and if we're going to sing praises, we, we would be uh, making a mistake, Mark, if we didn't talk about Luke Harris. You know, Luke, yeah. Luke is just finished up his coaching program. And in that time, it's pretty crazy. In that time, he has quit his full-time job, replaced his income, and they're in this process of building their house on a piece of land that he acquired from a mailing. I mean, if that's not a drop the mic moment, I don't know what is, right? No, it really is. And he's, I think he's quadrupled his closed deals from before when he was doing it on his own to coaching. He's on track to do 250 deals this year. He sold 17 properties last month. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. It's awesome. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. So he's, he's averaging about 20 deals a month. And if he's on track for 250, a little more. Yeah. Um, so actually last month wasn't a great month for Luke Harris, but it's going great for him. And, uh, and congratulations, Luke. Um, you've been, you've been great to work with. So that leads us to a quote of the week by the Zen master, Mike Zeno. Mike, what do you got? Hey Mark, yeah, so I think this quote relates really well to what we're talking about today because one thing that I, I think echoes in the back of when you say, how, much, how do you get a list? How much you pay for a list? How do you build it? I think what really is behind that is also a little bit of fear because they're not sure if they're getting the right list. There's, there's like some fear, like if they knew that was it. So that's, that comes to their education, right? To know, is this the right list to even get? So um, there's this quote I was looking at and I thought it related uh, – extremely well to what we're talking about. I don't know. So I'll tell you who it is after I say the quote. So it's an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. When it comes to investing, nothing will pay off more than educating yourself. Do the necessary research, study analysis before making any investment decisions. So we always talk about that, right? Investing in yourself. And that's why we have the opportunity for people to learn from uh, us, learn from Scott Todd, the flight school, which has the everything you need to know you know, so that you know when you're building a list that it's the right list. You know when you're buying a list, it's the right list. I think that's what we're hearing echoed behind all this is like, yeah, I'll go pay for it, but is it the right one? Is that the right, this, you know, there's a little bit of fear there. So the only way to remove that is with, with uh, education. And oh, that, that was Benjamin Franklin. Oh, wow. That's great. That's great. Um, the Walter Isaacson uh, biography of Franklin is, is phenomenal. I mean, talk about just an unbelievable life. Um, but, you know, he, he, what you learn, though, is he, he was intentional about it. And um, it, it's, it, it's great. Uh, yeah, Mimi's like, I love that book. So I want to thank the listeners. I want to remind the listeners, if you're getting value from the Roundtable podcasts, send it out on the interwebs. Email it to a friend. Anyone that's looking for more passive income in their life, um, you know, be a pal, send it off. And also do us three little favors, subscribe, rate, review the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review to support at the We're going to send you the $97 passive income launch kit. And if you want, I can send you a meme of me making fun of Scott Todd and not having an Apple watch. So just that alone is is worth it i think what do you think scott todd i had an apple watch i didn't enjoy it i sold it i took a poll at dinner one night at a boot camp asking people do you love your apple watch would you buy it again and like 70 percent of the people said that they did not love it and they wouldn't necessarily buy it again they were on the fence with it so look it's, look if it works for you i'm happy for you well, I mean, you know, you know, technology changes every minute. Now it's now it's rising. Hold it on. should be rising that you overpaid now, for a watch. Now it's really oh my! You said the you just said the wrong word. I think I was at sixty. The o word on you. Not, overpaid. Now getting, now overpaid. Oh no! But you're paying for a cellular data plan on that watch too. Of course I am. Okay, the thing is, like, you didn't even have the cellular plan before we need it improved it is improved greatly now the five is out okay whatever i'm just trying i'm just trying to help you to be less distracted and less addicted 
to your big iPhone that has the internet on it because you can get the audio books, you can get your podcasts, you can get all this stuff on the phone and then you can still be in touch with your family and friends and not constantly being distracted by the phone. It is like the perfect way to unplug without unplugging. That's all I'm saying. No, you still have a leash on you. A better what, leash. What are you saying? So you oh, do all your work on your phone and then you just, just so then you have your watch when you want to dissociate from all the email and stuff? Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. I don't check. Yeah. I mean, yeah, for sure. It's just great. Um, that's why I like it. But anyways, I, you know, I don't want to just, you know, keep <laughs> ripping on Scott Todd um, and bore everybody. But I do want to thank everyone. And uh, again, really appreciate it. Uh, go to landgeek.com forward slash training, learn more. And are we ready to do this? Yep. One, two, three. Let, Let Mark love freedom ring. Apple. ring. Wow. That's wow. <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, Eric even is chiming in. <laughs> Eric, tell yeah. Scott what you just told me. He can connect it with his Peloton too. And I could. Hashtag. Uh, I'll leave it right there. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'll leave it right there. For the heart rate monitor, you mean? Yeah. Oh, and wow. tracking his activity and and all that stuff. Yep. Do they have a Do they have an app for that? Um, I think you could probably use Strava. Yeah, I use Strava with it. Huh. Yeah. Hmm. How's it going, Scott, with that Peloton? I know Eric and I are on it consistently. <laughs> you know, I feel I feel like. I feel like the power has shifted and like Eric is feeding you privately through chat. So I like, didn't, I didn't, I did not <laughs> say anything. Some stuff here. Like <laughs> I, I feel like Eric is like shifting here, Mark. Like I'm not sure what's happening, but I'm going to have to talk I, to I, Eric I and get him back on my side. You know, you know what happened, Scott Todd? The surface happened. And all of a sudden, <laughs> all of a sudden us Mac guys bonded. Yeah. We're closer yeah okay. may, maybe i'll just tell you though let me just say something i i had a, a great opportunity to hang out with uh tate this weekend and i love his surface man did he show you that at the cheesecake factory did he pull it out there <laughs> yeah yeah no yeah do you guys have a, like a special moment you guys want to share Oh, Listen, we bonded. Mark, Mark, like, I see a surface in Tate's future any minute now. No way. Maybe if they don't let me on an airplane with my Mac, Tate, but yeah, see, see that that's coming. Tate, Tate is gonna Tate is gonna have a major announcement like soon that it, it's gonna be like I have a surface, and you guys wait, are gonna be like podcast over. Wait a second, how am I gonna travel to boot camp if I can't bring my Mac? You That's exactly the problem back. you're going to have. That's right. So Eric's not going to be able to be there. Uh, Bossman's not going to be there. Tate's not going to be there. It's going to be me and Mike Zeno. And you're going to be there because you're local. Otherwise, you're going to have to ship your computers out there. But, but Zeno and I, we are getting on planes with our surfaces because we're protected. And a nice attache. And Mimi, too. Mimi's going to be there because hers. she's not a Mac. So we're golden, man. That's how you're a fear monger. About fear. Should have seen, you should have seen the TSA throwing all the Macs in the garbage the other day. Like, can't take it on here. It's dangerous. <laughs> like a water I bottle. Mean, like, yeah, give me your water bottle. You got razors. Give me those two weapons and your Mac. Oh, please empty your Macs before you get to the TSA line. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Unbelievable. By the way, I just checked Apple stock. It's down 10% based on this conversation. <laughs> Way to go, Scott Todd. Now listen. Way you know, to go. Hey, you know, I went to uh, Mark the other day, and literally like over the weekend, uh, I was I was in Vegas with Tate, and um, we went to lunch at a very nice, like a very good restaurant, by the way. We go to this restaurant, but I as we're like walking to the restaurant, era? no, oh no, oh no. 
We actually, it was so good. We had to eat there twice, but that's a different story. Mark, we're walking to lunch. There's this massive line. Like, we're like, what the heck's going on around here? And it's right by the link, you know, the big Ferris wheel looking thing. We're like, what's going on around here? Like, what's happening? We're asking people like, what's going on? They're like, oh, they're opening the store down there. We're like, what? What store? It's the razor store. You familiar with the razor store? Not like the shaving razor, but like the computer gaming razor store. Like they yeah, just opened yeah. one in Vegas. The line was ridiculous. Like long. They you told us 2,000 people. 2,000 people. Tate and I went there the next day and they're like, oh yeah, 2,000 people came, came in yesterday. We're like, why? Like literally, like it's the smallest store you could ever imagine. They just sell like computers. They're Windows-based computers, by the way. They're just selling these computers. They're like, because, uh, well, we gave free give giveaways. They had some influencers here. And because it's the only place other than the Microsoft store where you can play like whatever hot game is coming out, like in advance, it comes out today. I think whatever game it was, I don't know, but like, that's cool. 2000 people lining up for this store, this razor store. Tate and I walked through there. We, we spent like what, five minutes in the store, Tate. We're like yeah. nothing to see here. We're out. Like we were out, but 2000 people, man. They were just That's good marketing. Really fancy keyboards. And when you touched oh, yeah. them, they made so much noise. They were not podcast friendly. Oh no. But no. with crisp, they might work. Yeah, that's right. So uh, Phoenix Bootcamp, by the way, is almost uh, full. So that, that'll be fun um, for sure. And uh, it's still like 80s here. So October still might be able to, to swim. I don't know. It Full usually weather. doesn't break till, till Halloween here for sure. But uh, very excited. Get on Halloween? We can't. The, the weather here doesn't really break until Halloween. We don't get like the true respite of like 60s and 70s. Are, are we there on Halloween? A couple like, days. Like no, 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 boot camp on oh, Halloween? 27th is Sunday, so the 31st is probably what, Wednesday. All right. So right before we leave right before. Thursday after. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right, great. Well, everybody have a great week. And uh, thanks again for, for being on. And, uh, you know, except for Scott Todd, it's just great to see everyone. <laughs> so... You know, I know go, why uh, you're. I do. I. I now know why you're so like upset. I know why. Why? Why am I upset? I because know you're why. You're a monger about my MacBook. No, because two weeks ago when you were out, and I hosted the brown table, it's like the highest downloaded version, isn't it? That's what it is. Oh my gosh. You might be. You know what? Mic that drop. might be the mic drop. My fragile it's, ego. <laughs> It's subconscious. I want to apologize to you, Scott. Yeah. You're going to be my, talking to my I, mom I, I, soon, too. I, yeah, I listened to that podcast, <laughs> and I thought to myself, why am I hosting the roundtable? It was really good. Honestly, I even, I even boxed you, and I begged you to take it over. You're like, no, no. Yeah. Well, if you think being mean to me, you have to apologize to my mom. Oh, you, apologize to your mom? Why? Remember when you had to apologize to Eric's mom? Because you were mean to him? Oh, that's right. All let's right. Let's start that again. Apology. Let's not start oh, that again. Oh, man. It was like a you know, nonstop what? apology session. I know your mom's not listening to the, the podcast. Eric's mom is. <laughs> you might have to, might have to apologize to my kids. I'm so cool. I know they're listening. That's true. right. <laughs> I don't know. All right, Mark. I'm going to let you off the hook, though. All right. Cool. Well, I... uh. I've got 10 more minutes before I can break my intermittent fast. I'm excited about that. Kind of I kind of jumped back on that bandwagon a few weeks ago. It's pretty good. I don't know. I'll tell you what, what killed me though is watching our, our friend Tate here. Like I'm, I'm trying to like watch my calories, you know, uh, Mark, you know, like trying to be conservative. Like I'm going to drink a diet Coke or I want to eat like a kind bar for a snack. Here's Tate drinking Coke. I'm like, there's 260 calories. <laughs> Eating a whatchamacallit candy bar. I'm like, there's 500 calories. Oh. We go to lunch. He gets, I get the regular fries. He gets truffle fries. 
I'm like, dude, this, this cat's killing it. Yeah. I'm living, living my best life, Scott. And <laughs> I'm telling you, man, let me give you a life lesson here. Anytime you're offered anything with truffles, the answer is yes. Yes. I agree. That is, that is a good life philosophy. You should put That's that in the like, group. Truffles? Sure. What are they on? Doesn't matter. You want them. This is the way you need to live your life from here on out. I ordered it on tuna sashimi last night. Absolutely. Because it's not going to ruin it. You know it's not going to make it worse. Mark, the next time you're in Vegas, Tate and I've got the spot to take you. I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm honestly like, I'm getting hungry enough. I'm, if it's a 45 minute flight, Tate, I could, I could take a lift over to this restaurant and just meet you there. Sounds good. See you there and, I, gotta uh... be, I gotta be back. I got, well, actually I could fly back out like in the afternoon. We'll eat and I'll fly back out. Um, cause I could do my, I've got another call in a little bit, but then I could do that while with you. It's not that big a deal, but, uh, let me check. Yeah. Flights. All right, Southwest. Wait, what's what's the? I'm not joking, by the way. What's the? Uh, oh my god. The flight. Oh my god. You had me at truffle. Um, is there is there a site like I can get like a last minute flight real real cheap? Just book it for tomorrow. It'll be much better. You, you didn't even ask tomorrow? Tate if he was free. What if he's got plans? Uh, I'm always that's free. Open. <laughs> that's true. That's the thing. That's not why I know Tate too. He's like, yeah. Uh, Allison's like, aren't you going to be with the baby? Well, no, no, Mark's flying in for lunch. Okay, so Phoenix to Vegas. Let's see, leave today. Can I even get a flight? Oh, I can get a flight today. Return today. Search. Hey, have you ever eaten, though? It's kind of a late lunch for you. What's that? Have you already eaten? It's a late lunch. I can make room for it again. It's not good. All right, well, I could be there by, yeah. It's not going to work. I'm not going to get there until 310. You have to go. I cannot tomorrow. believe that we're dragging this podcast out for this <laughs> I know. hypothetical I mean, situation. This would, least, this would be a $500 lunch to fly <laughs> one day. Uh Worth it though. Then I could see Dave. It's good. I'm not sure good if it's option. 500, good, but if you lived out here, you could even hypothetically think of this option, but you don't. Well, listen, if I lived out there, I'd be like, come on, Mark, just get in the plane. I'll fly you up there. Oh. All right. Mic drop. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Yeah. See ya. <laughs>